Well, good evening, Yorktown, and welcome to the Town Board Work Session for May 24th, 2022. If everyone could please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we could bow our heads in prayer as we remember all the patriots who have carried our flag uh, and defended our flag on this National Flag Day. Uh, we also want to keep in our thoughts and prayers, of course, all of our first responders, our police officers, firefighters, our EMTs. We also want to keep in our thoughts and prayers tonight uh, Jacqueline Davis Baker, uh, a Yorktown resident uh, who was an inspiration to many, uh, Yonkers, uh, retired Yonkers teacher. Unfortunately, uh, Jacqueline lost her battle last night to cancer, uh, and we keep her family in our thoughts and prayers today. Thank you. Okay. We'll do introductions quickly from my right. Good evening, Diane Quas, town clerk. Good evening, Tom Diana, deputy supervisor, councilman. Matt Slater, town supervisor. Ed Lachman, councilman. Sergio Esposito, councilman. Luciana Howitt, councilwoman. Adam Rodriguez, town attorney. Just a, I have just three quick announcements to make. Uh, first, I want to thank everyone who came out for Relay for Life. Uh, Relay for Life was held on Friday night here in the town of Yorktown, trying to uh, uh, reintroduce it to the community after a two-year hiatus caused by the pandemic. Uh, raised over $46,000 here in our community. So they did a, just a wonderful job. Uh, I especially want to thank uh, uh, Jim and Denise Poulin, who've been with us every step of the way for the last 15 years. Uh, just great people to have in our community. And again, a great night. Uh, and thank you to everyone who participated. Um, exciting news for Trader Joe's. Uh, we were over at Trader Joe's uh, today. Uh, myself, uh, Chief uh, Noble, our planning department. Uh, we had with us uh, members from the Trader Joe's management team. We also had with us um, uh, Dr. Phil Grilly, uh, who oversaw their traffic study. Um, and we a few other people joined us as well uh, from the Breslin Realty Group. Uh, and so we are re-examining in anticipation of Trader Joe's opening. We are and have re-examined uh, their traffic uh, plan. Uh, the Breslin Realty Group have agreed to hire private security to help with traffic, as well as uh, members of the Yorktown Police Department when they're off duty. Uh, so we are trying to proactively curtail the impact of the opening of uh, Trader Joe's on the 202 corridor, 202 corridor and our... Uh, and our community. Uh, we're very excited, though. Uh, they have started hiring. They will start uh, with, they're going to be hosting a couple of job fairs for people in the community uh, interested or in need of work. So please, um, they're going to be working with the Chamber of Commerce. I talked with uh, the president, Karen Trendell. Uh, please keep your ears and eyes open for the information on that. We'll, of course, be sharing it. Uh, but they're looking to hire uh, upwards of 200 people, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, they've already hired about 20 and um, it's just very excited to see uh, this finally come to fruition here in the town of Yorktown. Uh, so we're looking at an opening in the next four to six weeks. So it's coming, and we are excited. You'll see on the agenda uh, further down as a resolution uh, recognizing Juneteenth. Uh, I just want to let the residents know that we uh, won't know officially until uh, probably the end of day, the day Thursday, if not Friday morning, when we make the announcement. We are anticipating closure on Juneteenth pending uh, the approval by the CSEA uh, through a uh, contract uh, amendment, but we are planning on being closed at this point in time, Monday, June 20th, an observation of Juneteenth. Again, that is pending the CSEA's ratification of the amendment. Councilman Diana, I know you have some... Just one. Uh, announcements? Uh, the uh, Grange Fair is having its big truck day. I don't know if Tom can s zoom in on this. Uh, June 26th, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's also a car show, and um, it's in the back lot of the Grange Fair. Once again, that's Sunday, June 26th, between 10 and 3. It's a 
good chance for the kids to go see some really cool cars and um, go and see some really big trucks and some of the town equipment. Great. Thank you, Councilman. I, I did want to just point out, if I can, just going back to Trader Joe's, just to be very clear, there was a traffic uh, a plan that was approved as part of the site plan approval. Uh, seeing what happened at Popeye's, I know fried chicken's very, very, uh, it, very popular, uh, <laughs> especially Popeye's fried chicken, but we saw the impact that it had on the Route 202 corridor. So rather than being reactive, we're again trying to be proactive with the Trader Joe's opening, uh, which is why we requested them to re-examine uh, the traffic measures that they currently have in place and to work with our police department and our planning department to make sure that it is suitable. I know it's shocking. Even our town attorney was surprised to hear that. Uh, but, uh, mm-hmm. but again, trying to be proactive, rather reactive, and, and we do uh, recognize uh, and appreciate the efforts that are being made. Um, and I just want to make sure the residents understand that there was traffic uh, study originally done uh, by the applicant that was approved as part of their site plan approval. And I know Councilman Latch, when you wanted to add something. Yeah, just, uh, you know, to, just to uh, add on to what Councilman Diana was saying, after the car show and the big truck show, uh, get yourself, get your family together and come on over to the Veterans Memorial Field for the kickoff of the Yorktown Lions Summer Concert Series. And uh, that'll uh, start uh, on the 26th at 6 p.m. And our band to kick it off is Andrea and the Armenian Rug Riders. <laughs> That's how you know it's summer. That's it. When the concerts Lions concerts start. start. That's right. Don't, right. Forget, don't forget the Fireman's Carnival. And we have the Fireman's Carnival coming up. Yep. So that's like you want to provide the date? I, I believe it's uh, June 22nd. I'm not okay, sure. June 22nd it yep, is, right. is the parade. Yeah. And that's the, a great and the parade. Is through through the rest of the week into the weekend. So. Yeah, and the parade's a lot of fun. Everybody comes out for it. So it's going to be a great time in Yorktown. All right. So we have uh, a good agenda tonight. I want to start by introducing Scott Siegel of the LaBerge Group. Scott, you want to come to the podium? We haven't seen Scott in person yet. Most of our, or, and actually all, not most, all of our interaction with Scott's been via Zoom and virtually. Uh, but the LaBerge Group has been working with the town now for two years. It's been about two years, yeah. Um, early 2020, I think, just yep. before COVID, I had the opportunity to come down and, and address the board then. And I think this is my first time back since yeah. then. Um, so... Uh, the world's a little bit of a different place today than the last time I was here. Um, uh, Mr. Supervisor, thank you very much for the opportunity, inviting me down here uh, to address everybody in person. It's good to be back and see everyone. Um, quick little sidebar, I, I applaud the board's um, being proactive on the traffic situation with Trader Joe's. I can We have one right across from our office, and it's busy all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so for good, good reasons, on, right? For very good reasons. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm stuck in that traffic frequently, um, <laughs> and, and it's worth it. Um, so con, you know, good on you for being proactive with that situation. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, um, Scott Siegel uh, with LaBerge Group. Um, the town brought us on a couple of years ago. We've done... Uh, a number of uh, grants uh, for the town. Um, I am happy to report that since then, in the last couple of years, we have been successful in bringing in just about $7 million um, for various projects, um, most notably the Halix Mill Sewer project. Um, And uh, I think we (coughs) were able to also secure a a small Hudson Valley River, some River Valley grant. Yep. Um, to uh, assist with the comp plan update that I believe is ongoing or will be, will be. soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I uh, spoke with the supervisor about a week ago and you know invited me down to talk about what the plans are for this year. Uh, so we are you know now knee deep at least, maybe hip deep into CFA season at this point. They're all due j- the end of July, July 29th. We spoke about um, you know some of the bigger priorities for the town, and we determined that um, the community center would be uh, one big one. There's already, I believe, investment being made there, and so um, I met <coughs> Mr. Marino down at the park earlier uh, before coming here, and we had a terrific conversation. And um, I, you know, we kicked around some ideas on how to do this, and so. Um, probably following this, maybe tomorrow or certainly before the end of the week, I'd like to circle back with you and Mr. Marino, maybe set up a quick meeting to talk about how to approach that particular project, um, now that I know a little bit more about what we want to do there. Excellent. Um, the other one, of course, uh, kind of a bit of a resubmit from last year. We went for the local waterfront revitalization program um, as part Mohegan of... Lake. 
Correct. From Mohegan Lake um, to look at developing one, a local waterfront revitalization plan for the town um, and also dovetail into the comprehensive plan update as well as the watershed inventory that uh, is all going on. So they all work together. Um, we had a terrific conversation and exit conference with uh, Department of State on last year's application. Um, that conversation was terrific. They really didn't find anything wrong with the application. Um, but they did encourage adding in the smart growth comprehensive planning grant that they now offer. And so that'll be a bit of a, a two for this year. We'll resubmit the LWRP application along with its sister smart growth and, you know, fingers crossed we have better luck this year. Um, they know it's coming. They know. So, um, you know, I feel a little bit better about that this year. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, I know we still have some outstanding grants that we recently applied for that we are waiting on uh, results from, uh, one of which, uh, Ms. Quest, we work uh, with you very close with uh, one of my staff members, Jaron, who's uh, was terrific, and uh, uh, we expect that to be coming out soon. I'm hoping before the end of this month we'll hear about the records management program, and again, fingers crossed um, we do well on that one. Um, there is also the critical infrastructure grant we recently did with the police department. Um, for certain security upgrades uh, in buildings in the town. And I expect that will um, be announced in July. I Great. check those regularly. Um, so hopefully we'll find out on that one soon. Rem remind me on that one, that was for this building? I don't. That was for this building. That wasn't for the Capilini Center. I don't think we included that one. That Not was, to my knowledge. I what think we, we said was, it was let's get in the door with this one, and then it would be, recur you know, hopefully the plan is to be recurring. That is correct. Right. Absolutely. And, and so we started with Town Hall. Uh, and and so July you're saying it's a yeah it's a small grant that would be a fifty thousand dollar grant um, but usually once a community is awarded that funding they're encouraged to go back year after year so it's right. kind of an annual thing um, Great Saturday relatively low hanging fruit I don't know if anybody from Homeland Security is watching this but <laughs> um, in all in all honesty that tends to be pretty low hanging fruit and so that's something we can do routinely year after year for the Great. town. Great. I do them myself. Those I do personally, yep. and um, I'm, I'm happy to do those every year. Um, there's also still outstanding is that MWRR we applied for way back when we were first. Yep. I think that was the first thing we went for for horizontal grinder. Yep. Um, now way back, you know, in the pre-COVID world, and uh, you know that's uh, we talked about that being a three to five year wait list in that program. It's a rather unique one. Um, to my knowledge, it's still on the list. So yep. hopefully within the next year or two, um, we'll be getting, uh, I think that's about a $300,000 request that's sitting out which there. Is, which is great because I know um, Highway Superintendent Paganelli, who runs the organic yard, has been saying that the grinder has been down because they were waiting for, what was A the, ball bearing. A ball bearing. You've been waiting how long, you said? Three months. Three months. Just for a simple Sup ball bearing. Supply means, chain. Yeah. Supply chain disruption. Uh, yep. All so bearings we can definitely use a new grinder, though, so we're looking forward to hopefully receiving that. And grinder. that can be applied retroactively. That's one of the few programs where if you were in an emergency needed to buy the equipment tomorrow, right. um, you're still eligible under that program. Great. You'd just be reimbursed retroactively. It's great to know. Um, so for, the, for this year's CFA, so for those who don't know, it's a consolidated funding application <laughs> that the, the state puts out. Uh, so we're looking at... In, your your advice to us because you and i went through the matrix uh, a few times and i keep picking out things and you keep telling me to you know it's like shopping with mom you know he keeps telling me to put things back it's, on the shelf mm -hmm. it's all about the scoring uh, it's not yeah. personal it's, i want to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck right and know? so the the two that we really settled on was the lwrp from mohegan lake and then it was the it was the parks or the office of um historic preservation the uh, help Environmental some, Protection Fund. Yeah, help through, with some enhancements uh, for the Capilini Center. Yes, sir. To go along with the, the investments that we're already making. Correct. Any questions from the board on that? Mm -mm. No? no. Phil, you want to yes. you want to chime in here? As part as the things that we're doing with the Capilini Center is that the, we do have an issue that uh, a lot of people are aware of. I just want to make everybody aware of. We do have a security issue. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just Friday, we were chasing kids, you know, second floor, third floor. And uh, what I'm looking at is to close off portion of the buildings. In other words, is we want to leave the doors open to give people access. 
where we have our events and also access for when people are using the field that they be able to go inside and use the facility. And also, sure too, is on the weekend, sometimes we have people in the gym where I just want to confine them to the area where the bathrooms are, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, I looked at a couple of things. We looked at cameras, but cameras don't solve problems. Uh, what I'm looking to do is to put security doors, and I also met with uh, the fire department to make sure that we're following all the uh, fire regulations. And I'm looking to put security doors in with a passcode key, which will give them, which will give em- employees or anybody else that has to have access to any other part of the. You can the, open that uh, door, sir. You can open it. You can open the door. That's okay. He went down the ramp already. Okay. It should be open. I thought. Okay. That will give them access to the rest of the to, to the rest of the facilities of what they would need besides just the bathrooms. Uh, that would be one security door which would cut off access to uh, uh, the senior center. And then uh, also there's a staircase to the opposite side where the senior center is. There would be access there. Like In other words, you can't get in, but you can get out. Right. All right? And uh, I'm just looking at something like that. I got like, you know, just around about some price figures, so I would like to, you know, I'm going to put a resolution in next week, you know, to go out to bid and we'll, and we'll play from there. But I, we definitely have a security problem there, you know, besides a little bit of mess they make for me, for, for me you know. Like I said, I have usually one person working at night, and he has a schedule in which he has to clean so he can't just stay by the doors. Yeah, it's a, it's a very challenging facility to really manage because you have – like I hear from the daycare center, you have a daycare center that operates out of there. I've heard from the parents, you know, who are obviously concerned. They don't want free flow right. in and out of the facility, which I can, as a parent with a child in daycare, I completely understand that. Uh, but then you also in the same facility have the senior nutrition center where seniors want to come in where they want the free flow capability so they can come in and speak with Noreen and the staff and get their lunch and, and socialize. And then you also have there's the parks and rec department does the rec, uh, they have recreational mm-hmm. programs during the day that go on there too and then at night you know we use uh, you know friday i was you know on friday we were had relay for life right we left the building open because we wanted people to be able, be able to use the restrooms and then we've got you know six we, o'clock we, at we night also, seven o'clock we, at night we've also got, we we rent the rooms out during the night the for meetings and, yep. and and, and uh, for for sp- Birthday parties. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Scouts. Everybody, yeah. Scouts have used it. Yeah. So. But my point being is then eight, seven, eight o'clock at night, you we're chasing people out. Yeah. out of the third floor who shouldn't be. We also have the museum up there. On bicycles. And there, you know, there's TikTok videos of kids racing bicycles down the halls. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's really becoming a, uh, a significant challenge. Yeah, and so I, we're trying to figure out what that balance is. I agree that the, this, you know, the cameras won't prevent even though I think cameras are still needed, <clears throat> something that we talked about, uh, well, you know, that, for how long we've been talking that, about how that, the cameras are. That's another thing I'm looking at. I'm, not, I'm looking at a doing some research for a camera system. Yeah. Which not one of these big commercial ones, but ones that I can put the wireless and I can have it, you know, in in my manager's office and my and my uh, supervisor, my supervisor's office. So makes sense. Just a couple of things we're looking at, but uh, the camera's not going to be that big of an expense. It's more the security for the keypads because it's it, it's a lot tighter. It's got to get tied into the alarm system, you know. But it makes sense, especially in considering what we do have there. Right. And and then this way, to your point, we can we can keep the building open to, for the people who use restrooms for like the Lions concerts and everything. Right. And we're not worrying about who's roaming around taking videos of themselves racing bikes down the halls on the third floor. I mean, it, it, you know, because if someone gets hurt, it's a serious problem. There's been other episodes there that, you know, we won't get into, but I think it's time that we, you know, really look into these doors and see if we can get the, secu- the, the keypad up there All right. just to protect the tenants, protect the residents. And the team center, Davis. Yeah. Oh, the team. Yeah. Well, we won't go. We won't. I don't want to go into detail. So, okay. huh. Phil, I can help you if you need uh, if you need some advice with cameras and stuff like that. And uh, if you need some contacts for uh, door systems and stuff like that. Oh, you do? Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll stop by to see you. Yeah, I guess the other thing I'm just take the opportunity to do is just remind parents because we have again, we're see, we have seen an uptick in complaints 
regarding the track. Uh, you know, when we were there for relay, we had you know kids on motorized scooters zipping through, and and you know I don't know how I don't know how they didn't hit somebody. You know, so please just remind your kids to respect the rules of the track. No bikes, no skateboards, no motorized scooters. You know, um, we have been getting uh, you know complaints again, and we see this seasonally yep. because I understand it. I, you know, having grown up here, I get it. We used to walk around you know the heights too, but. Um, be respectful when you see people. Be respectful of the town. Be respectful of the town's property. I, I would just appreciate it if my fellow parents would remind their kids if they're going into town uh, those important uh, pieces of information. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil. One quick uh, reminder I had forgotten about. Um, the Adaptive Playground is oh, opening yeah. at Granite Knolls Saturday at 1030. Um, we'll be uh, ribbon cutting and... Um, should be a good time up there. Everybody will get a chance to see what a bunch of really, really enthusiastic ladies have been yeah, working on yeah. along with other people for quite some time. But it's really kind of neat. Thanks, thanks. And I just want to thank Scott again um, uh, for coming down. I just had, Scott, can I just ask one question? On, on the LWRP, are, so are we taking the same application and putting it in, or we, do we have to redo the whole application in its entirety? We're not redoing the whole application. Yeah. With it. Um, and I don't like reinventing wheels that don't need to be reinvented. So we are able to basically use the foundation of the original. Based on the notes we garnered from that exit conference with Department of State, we know now what we need to focus on and what okay. we need to beef it up to make it stronger. Great. So we are going to comb the application and, and the materials to make sure we're doing that this yeah. time and then build in that smart growth comprehensive planning along with it. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very appreciate much. it. Appreciate it. It's good to be back. It's Thank good you. to see you. Thanks time. for coming down, Scott. Thank you. Okay, next we have a pair of stormwater management permit applications, 3628 Flanders Drive, as well as 2823 Hickory Street. Uh, Anthony Pizzari, uh, sir? Yep. Great. Why don't you come up? We also have Dan CRC with us, our engineer, uh, and John Tegeter's in the back, our director of planning. Uh, but Anthony, if you wouldn't mind taking the podium and uh, just walk us through the applications for, for both uh, Flanders and Hickory. Sure. Um, I think the first one you have is Flanders. First yes. one on the agenda? Yep. Okay. Um, Flanders presently <clears throat> is an empty lot. And uh, the owner is proposing to build a, one fa a single family house. Uh, with the typical driveway and that sort of thing. So what I did was I contacted Dan and I said, what would you like for drainage on the site? And he said, I, I need you to pro provide for water quality management. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, uh, you have the plan, if you have the plan in front of you. Yeah, you know, give me two seconds. Let me just pull this up. Sure. That's no problem. Sorry about that. No, take your time. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, Councilman. <laughs> Keep going, man. So this is Flanders. Do it open. Here we go. All right, we're with you. Okay. Uh, while I was sitting here thinking about it, I believe there may have been a house there at one time that burned down. So when I saw the lot, I mean, there was nothing. The foundation was gone. Everything was gone. It just looks like uh, grass on the lot. So anyway, I spoke to Dan, uh, showed him what we were pro uh, proposing to do. He said, um, give me uh, Coltex or whatever it takes to do the water quality management. 
So I have on the right side of the plan there, I did the calculation. It requires 31 feet roughly of, of Coltec units. So I'm, they, they come in seven foot length. So I'm using five units for 35 feet. And we're proposing to put it in the front. Uh, it's going to take the downspouts from the roof. And also I have a trench drain across the driveway. So it's going to capture the water coming down the driveway and put that in there also. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. The Coltex units are just the underwater, uh, underground retention units? Correct. Like, uh, okay. They're usually seven feet long. These are uh, <clears throat> the 330 XLs. They're about 30 and a half inches high and 50 something inches wide. Like the tri galleys kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dan, anything you want to add? Yeah, just, uh, I mean, this was, uh, there was a fire here, so this is technically a redevelopment of an existing lot that had been built out, so we we're just putting a new house on it. So uh, this is one of those things that's over the, uh, the 200 cubic foot threshold, since, and so it's before you, so that'll be a, another discussion we may have to have at another time, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, but that's why it's here before you this evening. Okay. So I, I think from our standpoint, we can just refer out. I think we. Did you refer? Did you refer? It's this been to planning board, I believe. So. Referred it out initially, like we wanted to. Mm -hmm. Yep. A full referral. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Pizarro, is there already uh, sewer on the lot, or is it or is it septic? It's sewer, uh, it's there, sewer. right? Yeah. Sewer in, in Flanders. Yep. All right. So we'll make a motion to refer out. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's go look at Hickory. Okay, the next one. This one uh, is the classic knockdown. They're knocking down the existing house that's there and putting up a new house virtually in the same spot. The footprint is almost identical. Same idea. I spoke to Dan. I said, Dan, what do you, what do you need me to do? So he said, same thing give me water quality uh, did the calculations this one required 17.6 feet um, so I'm using three Coltex which is 21 feet and they're going in the front uh, this has uh, a little bit of a unique situation it's got a detached one car garage that's off to the right if you've got I, I'll, I'll, <laughs> if you have the plan in front of you if yeah, not it's up right is this oh okay great there you go. okay so you can see there's a uh, yeah there's a detached a drive a separate driveway and a detached garage on the front <coughs> uh, onto the side rather, and what we're doing here is picking up the house and whatever part of the walk we can. There's an existing walk that goes out to Hickory Street. Asphalt driveway right here. And uh, I'm trying to save as much of that as possible. Then we just bent it and brought us across the front into where the house is going. Okay. Same idea, same thing, water quality. And I think, as Dan said before, I think I'm in front of you because we're over the Across 200 the cubic. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. Dan, anything you want to add? Um, again, the same themes ongoing here. It's a, it's a redevelopment. It was a property that obviously still had this. In this case, the house is still there. So um, this one is on septic. So uh, the septic will have to be upgraded. Um, I guess there was a number of comments uh, that we provided, and um, I think it's you know it's pretty straightforward. Okay. And the clerk's office, I'm sure, did the initial referral to planning. All right. Uh, I see. Yep. I see. Lawrence, Larry right, Klein passed one in already. But nothing from conservation, right? Tree, right? Tree said that it doesn't involve any tree removals, so they have no objections to this project. Right. And what did uh, the, what did planning say? I haven't received anything from planning. John. We have no planning objections. No planning objections. Yeah, if you can just, so we have it for the record. Sure. I know how much that record is important to you, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it will be important to you one day. 
I know it's going to be very important to me one day. So, oh, if John. You're speaking into the microphone, you're not going to be on the record. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Ah. Uh, and then, um, what, what else did you say you got from? Thank you, Anthony. So, do you have conservation? We're good. Septic has been, um, I can do that. Septic's already been upgraded. Have Not you gotten that? copies of these comments yet? I mean, uh, the Conservation Board is the only one that provided any substance. Uh, I'll check. I may not, but I'll check. And then I'll co if I don't, I'll contact someone and get them. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's, it seems like we already referred out, so I don't know if we need to do that again. Well, typically we would refer out to the Conservation Board. Which we would and planning anyway. So. That's our starting point, yeah. You want to do full referral? Yeah, let's do a full referral. Okay. On it. All right, so we'll make a motion for uh, refer out the application. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, sir. Okay. Very Thank good. You. That's Thank, you. Thank you. All right, cruising way ahead here. Um, I don't see the next applicant, so I do see, well, I saw Bruce Apar. Bruce, is Bruce Apar in the back? There you go. That was perfect. There's your lookalike, Ed. We're jumping ahead. There's your lookalike. Yeah, Although I don't jump as well as I used to. But I have a funny feeling. I think Jen has just left to call me. Did 962 6120. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, she walked by. I go like this. I guess she didn't see me. <laughs> she must have thought you were me. I think she went yeah. upstairs to call me. To, oh. um, she thought you were Ed. Yeah, I, right. Yes, yeah, that's, that's true. that happens. That's right. But you're here. <laughs> Maybe not. We're both here. It's debatable. <laughs> yes, we're both here. All right. Anyhow, nice to see everybody. Good to see you, Bruce. You too, yeah. my man. Same, Bruce. Same. And, uh, and, you know, first on behalf of the committee, and it's, I say the rest of town, thank you for that resolution. <coughs> uh, you know, the hate has no home here resolution oh. from May. Um, Absolutely. And thanks for having enough faith in the committee that you're giving us the ball to run with. Mm-hmm. So on, on this uh, Unity Mural, um, just for the public's information, we have yet yeah. to hear back from the state about their permission. Uh, we have heard, I, I can tell you that, you know, and I know, Sergio, you've had feedback as well on this. Yes. Uh, but we have heard from members of the community about you know, suggestions and ideas. So we've asked yeah. the Arts and Culture Committee to uh, run point on it, to engage as, you know, the stakeholders right. that have reached out to us. Uh, and so, you know, Sergio will put you in touch with people who reach out to him, and I can let right. you know the feedback that I've gotten as well. Um, and then also, you know, just to run point on the design. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can yeah, give please. you some update. Am I supposed to announce myself? Hi. Yes. Bruce Apar. Hi, Bruce Apar. <laughs> Co-chair of the Yorktown Arts and Culture Committee. <coughs> There's a lot of different ways, obviously, this could be done. Um, now... If we're going to go the route of professional artists, the first question that pops up is, is there or could there be a budget for it? Mm -hmm. Who they're going to want, obviously. And it's not, I'm not talking about anything exorbitant. It's, you know, more in the line of an honorarium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but um, I'm very thankful that there is a Yorktown, somebody I've known for many years, uh, her name is Katie Fed Fader. Uh, and she's been very helpful. She's like my rabbi on this. And um, so here's, here's one example is, first of all, I'm glad we're uh, on the same page where I know originally the idea was to replace the egregiously offensive graffiti, mm -hmm. you know, with something mm -hmm. else in its place. But I, you know, having spoken to you the other night, Matt, and our committee, even several weeks ago when we talked about this, felt... You know, there's a number of reasons why we're better off not doing that. One is, you know, you might even say, why follow their lead? <laughs> but very few people will see it, just like, yeah. you know, a few yeah. people saw the first one, but even one person seeing it is one too many, right. what they wrote. Um, so the alternative is to, for one um, example, select, let's say, five to seven locations in town you know, and now, so we're talking about public art, right? That's what this is. And it's a very 
I mean, it sounds funny to say trend, but it is. It's a, it's a huge trend in, you know, all over the country, public art. Um, find five, let's say, six or seven locations, uh, and then put out an artist call. Um, and you know, that could work different ways. You, know, you can have the artist say, okay, I'd like to uh, you know, create something for that, you know, that wall. You know, we, uh, Matt and I had talked about, and Augie and I had talked about, the side of Yorktown stage. Mm -hmm. The side of Yorktown stage, I should specify, that faces the, the brick wall that faces DeVito, the track, um, because there's nothing there, and it's a very big surface. And, and Mr. Supervisor, you had mentioned, because it's a, uh, the cultural center is a historic, historically protected building, right? That could be an issue. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, but there are ways around that. You could put canvas up that doesn't deface the building, or even wood could be used mm -hmm. to paint on. Um, so there's ways around that. Um, you know, as far as the message, by the way, something I just wanted to, to bring up is I know that the official the resolution mentions hate has no home here, um, which has become sort of a trope, you know, for this. But, I mean, I, I'm going to make a case, because I feel like an attorney now. I'm going <laughs> to make, make, make a case that, one, I mean, that's self-explanatory what it means, and there's nothing wrong with it. But it's being used a lot. So if Yorktown, if we as Yorktown want to differentiate ourselves, maybe there's other aspirational phrases. So, you know, the thing about hate has no home here, as marketing people will tell you, it's, it has the word hate in it and no. It's like, almost like two negatives. So, you know, we can come up with um, several, you know, alternatives and then tell the artist, pick one and use that as your prompt, you know, mm -hmm. for the art. I mean, one of the ones I thought of, because I love Sinatra, I mean, it maybe sounds corny, but, you know, Yorktown is my kind of kind town, you know, stuff like that. You know, I love Yorktown because Yorktown loves everybody, or, you know, mm -hmm. that idea, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's positive, and, and, and it incorporates the name of the town. Right. So, stuff like that. Um, so, the idea is to have multiple murals uh, displayed around town so we get maximum exposure, you know, for people who are seeing it. And now another approach we could take, you know, I'm, that was the professional artist approach, more or less. We could have a contest for kids. Mm -hmm. And one way that could work, which I found fascinating, but I certainly didn't think of it, is, you know, like to say it's a contest for kids creating art, and we can give them, you know, wording that they could use or choose from. They can create the art, you know, in, uh, in their own arts and crafts paper, manila paper, if I remember my elementary school <laughs> properly. And then you could have a professional artist blow it up. Mm -hmm. and, and, and recreate it on a larger canvas. That could be cool. Yeah. So That'd things really like that. Cool. Yeah. Um, please stop me if you have questions. Well, Bruce, I, you know, you could, you could also look at a combination of these things yes. as well. Yeah. Yes. With the amount of, that you're thinking. Uh, would, would uh, if you do an artist call, would there be submissions that, that are approved, that are looked at, that are... Y yes, yeah. and that's another question. Um, you know, another issue to deal with, uh, th this woman I mentioned who I was talking to, you know, was saying, you know, well, the committee, you know, I guess the committee would, I said, well, maybe the committee could be included in the judging, but um, it's not to say we should be the only ones judging it. I mean, I'm not an art expert, you know. I mean, other people are on the committee, actually. I might be the only one who isn't. Um, but no, but we can call on other people to, you know, to form a larger panel, judging panel, right. to your point, yeah. Councilman. I mean, in my, in my opinion, I would want the art to symbolize who we are as a town, yes. what we stand for, right? Who we are, what we stand yes. for, and where we're moving, like where we're going. Yeah. So, I mean, even a walkway would be nice. Yeah, no, like I, on, well, the, on the well, ground, I mean, there's, like a, there's something yeah, that, like people can actually walk. I mean, people do like cool little tiles and like, you know, like, pa like right. actual like, um, pavers of whatnot, and then they right. can put art on it, and it's kind of like we're rebuilding the, the roadway. And, and there was and one, there was a very successful one recently done the last couple of years in Sleepy Hollow, right on the river, you know, oh, where, yes. the, where the they lighthouse is, path. the wishing wall. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 and they, what they did was they commissioned about four or five artists, and each of them painted a section of it, um, yeah. that type. And, you know, there's a lot of benchmarking, too, that we're planning to do. To, that's a great point, Councilman, is that... Um, I mean, Peekskill has these kinds of murals in a couple of different locations. You know, Katona does Chappaqua. Does, 
and that's what I'm saying about public art. All, a lot of Westchester towns are doing this. But the so. nice part about having something like that, it connects to dip, we are several miles. What are we, 42 miles long? Like, you know, so it's like we could have these, these connectors, right, in multiple places in our town. Yes, right. Where yeah. it embarks and like, it doesn't have to be this, it has to be something that's consistent and that embraces the entire community and having them so that they're somewhat scattered brings you kind of all back. You know, to connect the dots. The, yes. the, the one that comes to my it. mind, Bruce, is the one that as you drive down Route 9 in Peekskill, it says, Peekskill, a friendly, friendly town. Friendly town, yeah, I know. That's, yes. And it's on yes. a piece of, right. of, of, right. of uh, mm-hmm. fence. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And it's yeah, the size of that town. window. And I think everybody has probably seen it or yeah. has, yes. you know, from time to time. And it's just yeah, a right. simple thing. In fact, in, I spent a lot of time in Peekskill. Uh, <clears throat> they, you know, they sort of joke about it, but they love that sign. Yeah. So, yeah, they love that sign. And it's, and it's yeah. really just a brown fence with peak skills a friendly town Sim- right, that's simple. it that's real right. simple right. very simple yeah um, so I mean those are the you know broad strokes um, so maybe yeah. maybe what you can do for us then is uh, identify sites locations <clears throat> potential yeah. locations yeah. right for the for us to, to bring back to us for us to look at and, 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 and I would consider. suggest if you can at least one in each hamlet like <laughs> yeah I think no, I think each hamlet your, would be right. good and and to you know, the connecting the connected. dots part is is uh, I think an important one, but also recognizing the uniqueness of each hamlet. I think it'd be a good opportunity for us to do that as well because right. that's something that um, I don't think people sometimes recognize how the different pockets of our town and each right. community is right. distinct and unique and in its diverse. own yeah. right. And yeah. and so if we can Say. come up with some way of of recognizing each hamlet, but also drawing it together about you know the greater. Uh, commu- you know, the community as a whole in some fashion. Oh, I think that's that cool. also how we want to see all facets of our community. Right. Like, you know, I mean, from religion to race to yeah. gender equality, all that. No, I mean, I love By that By doing idea, it, but... you're stepping, you step into, yeah, we get it. We all like to be with our like-minded, you know, it's, I get it, I get it. But the truth is that we are one community. Right. And the one community needs to find its connections That's, And then home. even there might be a phraseology in there and what you're saying about one community. I, so. I write some really nice Hallmark cards. <laughs> I think we okay. can come up with some really good, yeah, powerful seriously. Yeah, right. And, and Bruce, I do, yeah. and I thank you because I definitely agree that the hate has no home here is, you know, it's a great message, yes. but the double negatives and the, you know, almost, you know, throwing it up is, is this, this big shield. Right, and it right. really, it really isn't. And I think that, you know, my, from my point of view, and I am, prob- I probably make you look like Michelangelo with my art ability. <laughs> but, uh, so, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, I would, I would love to see, just something that really integrates. Yeah. Something, something that that gives a visual message, that right. that says, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. And and I'd love to see. That integration there yeah, versus no, sloganism. Yeah. But by Michelangelo, if you mean I spent a lot of time on my back, I mean I do like to sleep. So. There you go. <laughs> yeah. um, I thought you were a teenage I would also, ninja turtle. Let's I see. think that one way or the other, incorporating some type of uh, uh, youth artwork would be great too. Yeah. So uh, you know, even if you youth, yeah, I yeah. think it's important that they have a, they have a voice and they have a seat at the table here. It is their community too, right? So no, I, I, I think agree. I agree, supervisor. I think if we can incorporate some type of maybe you do you know some type of our competition. No, I, that, well, we talked about I talked yeah. about that too with that, the woman uh, um, Katie Fader about. I mean, and she she knows people uh, like art teachers who could supervise them, but yeah. they need to be supervised. The other thing I thought of is the timing couldn't be better. But it could be part of a summer camp type of activity or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. And the nice part Not about a bad that idea. Being, yeah. being that you guys are doing it, you can even put some sort of write up for each. Each person that has that there's a little bit more history behind why they chose yeah that piece of art. Right. No, but when you talk about the Hamlets, you know, I don't know that this is practical, but it would be cool if we could get an artist from each Hamlet in the process. You know, to, to create their Hamlets. I can. But own. regardless, we're acknowledging all the Hamlets. Teaching. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What were you saying? I'm sorry, Sergio. Yeah. No, no, I'm good. So, so, yeah, I think, I think where we're leaving off is you're going to work with the committee to come up with a potential inventory of places. Locations, yeah. Yep. Um, uh, but should we come up at this maybe, point come up with, with, you know, phrases or memes? Yeah, or I don't see why not. I, you know, I, just, I don't want to let this go. I yeah, think it's no, important I, that I, we, you know, this was a very uh, frustrating, sad, angry chapter. Yep. And, and so I think we really need to 
you know, we need to end it in our way. And, and yep. I think that's yep. together as a community. And so, you know, yeah, come up with come up with the places, come up with the slogans. And I think we also should come up with the parameters for, for youth art competition. Okay. And then also the other thing is, you know, um, there's been this art around town um, yes. initiative. Yeah. 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 So even if any of the, you know, even if, you know, you get multiple submissions, maybe all the youth submissions are used in the <laughs> art around town initiative or something like, you yeah, know, I'm yeah, sure we can yeah, come up with absolutely. something. You can put yeah. it in the library, you can put it here at town hall. I, you know, so there's, there's a, a million lot of, places or even yeah. a lot of things that we can do. Yeah. If we put, it's not something that's supposed to be one event. Right. But but ultimately, no, right. but ultimately, it does have to have a uh, have, in my opinion, it has to have a teaching. Right. And the teaching yeah, is yeah. that we took something that was incredibly ugly and turned it into something that was beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. And it teaches our children, and regardless of where these children and what community these children are in, it teaches our hearts to take a second, right, count to five before doing something stupid, mm -hmm. and then making the right decision. And by doing that, we move in the right path. And by leading by example, we can teach and listen to our youth and grow from there. And you just reminded me of something. Um, uh -oh. As I asked, I had asked the supervisor earlier today, if the, are, are they still alleged perpetrators? I don't want to misspeak. Or, They're still alleged. Yeah, alleged. Mm -hmm. If the alleged perpetrators were sentenced, I mean, I figured I would have known, but I, I thought I missed it. But I don't know where, uh, be, uh, before which uh, bench they're going to go. Is it Croton instead of? Uh, um. Might no, be, they might be, be going to York. No, it York be Plains, it might be. Family. Oh, yeah, right. Cause I think it's White Plains. Yeah. I read. I, I read somewhere White Plains. Except for one. Yeah, right. There's three miners. Well, three I, miners I, I, and one one adult. I mean, anyhow, my my point was, you know, it would be, I think, quite appropriate if, I'm just making assumptions here now. You know, if the part of the sentence is community service. Right. That they're, they're, they're part, part of Part it. of their community service was contributing. Yeah, that's exactly what Ed said. Oh. I, I had just said that to right. get out of my, <laughs> not only do we look alike, we're starting <laughs> to think alike that's first. Scary. That's, 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 you know, uh, kiosks might be a way also in different locations where if you yeah. could have multiple youth artists that would, you know, <laughs> even if we have a bunch that want to do art, they do it yeah. on a certain size canvas for lack right. of a better word. And um, <clears throat> it's put up, let's say railroad park. We have, Two, yeah. three kiosks mm -hmm. in there, and it can be changed out. Uh, so that that's might... a great idea, council. I mean, I love well, the idea. I love the idea of putting them to work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is like fantastic. Yeah, right. They should well, be part of the solution. Right. That's, that's right. The they should be involved that's in right. the whole process. I love that. Not just yeah. the work end. Of that's it. spot yeah. on. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, maybe we can work with the town attorney. But once we have something in place, maybe that's something that we can work with the town attorney on to see if there's a way of communicating that to the DA's office. I don't know. Yeah. I leave. That's why. That's why we have an attorney. <laughs> I'll leave that to him. I mean, All right, good. Uh, so you've got some good parameters, I think. Some yeah, good. No, this some, is great. Thanks again. Thanks some, very some much. Some feedback to, to, but I, I think it's really important that we do something. Yeah, uh, no, I agree. You know, and I'm not, I don't think we should be waiting for DOT because who knows how long that 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 decision is going to take. And to the points that we made earlier, I think there could be something bigger and better that we can do with this. Yeah, no, that's and, and also you know what you had said, Supervisor. I think in the statement about the resolution about. Now, one of the reasons you were so angry at was it doesn't reflect the typical Yorktowner. And I think that's also should go into whatever the message is that should be reflected. This is not us. This is obviously not us. I think so. we're far from And P.S. it wasn't. <laughs> and it wasn't. Right. I think that's that right. Yorktown, yeah. right. I think that as a human, as a mother, I am not the kind of mom that would say not me, not mine. Right, right. I like right. to believe that we may have equally children in this community that A, may be making mistakes, B, want to try to be cool and are doing it in a right. hateful manner too or being misled. I right. think it's our, it's our job to not only let these children pay their price by, by participating if that's, a, if, that's, if that's possible, but more so show our kids like what the, like if you even thought about it, right. like, like no, that, right. that's not yeah. allowed. Yeah. And if you did, why? And isn't this a better way? Of speaking for your community right. and having a connection with your community, right? It's there is a level of there's a little of like human accountability, yeah, and I don't want to yeah. just point oh it's Croton's kids or it's Chappaqua's kids yeah. or is it? Oh, right, right. Right. I'm pretty sure that the doesn't, kids it doesn't really matter. Yeah, riding right. bicycles right. in the Capellini building or right. in Acme, their moms and dads yeah. are you know doing the right thing by night when they find and come home. So it's just I just want I just want us to have the opportunities to teach. Yep. If our voices could just be a little bit louder and a little bit more heard, and there's right. productivity, right. and there's a tangible action to what we're preaching, yes. then children can manifest it, and it becomes a lesson. And I hope that that community does the same thing, yep. and all the communities around us.
Yeah. What, by the way, just quickly, one other one other location that was mentioned is light pole banners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we do a lot of that here in town. Yeah, I know, yeah. right. Yeah. So they are in short demand, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I know it's there. Yeah, right, there's a scarcity of available <laughs> location. Right. Anyhow, thanks again. Thank you, good work, Bruce. Bruce. Yeah, the, you circle too. back with us. Let me know when you're when you and the committee have a t- have a chance to you know really digest this and come right. up with some more you know definitive I think direction. Then you come. Well, then we can have you back here, okay. and, and we can go from there. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thank Bruce. Awesome. Thanks, Appreciate everybody. it. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. Okay. I see we have Joe Rena. Joe, don't. T- <laughs> if you want, we can go to. You want me to have Dan come on first, so you can you can prepare yourself. Dan, John. We're going to skip ahead. Joe's not used to us being ahead of schedule. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so here we are. No, we have to do. We have to get a little table mounted on the side of that no. podium. Hey, John. John, do you remember the Do you remember the podium that we were going to bring safe. back from the field home that one time we visited? Yes. John O'Hearn was donating it to the town, yes. and it had like uh, it had this, and then underneath it, it was actually a little taller, and then underneath it, there's a little shelf. Oh, we do have it? We're, oh, I, I didn't know that. Cool. There you go. Okay. You ask and you receive. See, see Problem that? solved. Because Joe, Joe always loses the mouse on that computer when he's up here giving yeah, a demonstration. He yeah, he does. Uh, all right, Dan, we're going to talk. Let's talk town hall first. Okay. Up, if you could, I'm just going to see if we can get this going again. Look at that. Technology's working. Uh, I don't want to jinx it, though. Um, let's see. All right. So talk to us. Where are we at? All right. Well, we're putting it together as one big document. It's going to be the site work associated with redoing the sidewalk, (coughs) parking, uh, and creating a new portico to enter the building. Um, so that that's, that's all together. This is the portico here. Yes, that's what the And this was, was, and you brought this over to uh, Abaca? They uh, saw it last Tuesday night. They had, we met with them like a month ago. They had some comments. We responded to them. So they saw it last Tuesday night. I haven't seen a report or anything, but I think we incorporated uh, what they wanted. Okay. Uh, that looks uh, good. So I, did, I think that's ready to go. Um, so really all we're doing right now is just preparing um, – the, the details, we're actually retooling because there's a lot of details we should have that we don't. So we're putting that all together because we're going to use those uh, CAD details for a lot of the, mm-hmm. the different projects that go out. So we're, I think we got most of what we need for this job, and a lot of that will um, dovetail with um, some of the PD stuff. Likewise, um, we're also finishing up new uh, bid specifications. Not the front end, you know, with all the legalese. This is... Uh, very specific uh, specifications for each of the elements, the sidewalk, curbing, uh, 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 what do you call it, um, slate, shingles, you know, the, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So we're just trying to have a comprehensive bid document that includes, you know, basically. Is that for both or just for this one? Well, it, it, some of them will roll over, but it's really, like I say, it's kind of a retooling yep. that we don't have this stuff. So we're, you know, so we're getting stuff from different sources. We're kind of getting it to look consistent with the other sections in the bid. Um, so that's really, I mean, I think the fundamentals of what we want to do, we've gotten there, though these plans reflect it. So the only thing now is just the detail sheets, make sure we got everything. And uh, and like I say, the, the, the stuff that we need for the bid document. So okay. otherwise I think we're just about ready to go. And uh, timeline on uh, when we can see that I think I think we're in the two week window now to have everything tied together. Okay. And you know if we should be there, I mean it. You know uh, I I think that it'll be tight enough that there shouldn't be any issues with a the contractor you know disputing over whether something was in. Well, that, I mean with specifications, you like to get this. I understand. You want, you want to make sure that the contractor understands the deal, and you don't end up in a prolonged discussion over what he was supposed what was included in the bid and what wasn't. Yep. So we were trying, that's why we're, you know, otherwise we could probably put this out quicker, but I'm trying to like get this stuff tightened up to, and, cool. I, and that's not to say you don't end up with that stuff anyway, but you like to try and protect the town as best we can. Mitigate it. Of, of course. So is it something that we can see a resolution next week to the clerk for us to, 
approved to go out to bid on? Well, I guess um, if I need two weeks to advertise for bids, you want the full package, right, Diana? I want the full package okay. before we advertise for bids. Okay. So then I guess we could shoot for that meeting, uh, I guess it would be the meeting, would be July 5th? Okay. And we, should, we should be good to go. I was hoping before that. Yeah. To be quite honest. I was hoping we could get it for next, that's why. I, you know, I, we're, <laughs> we've, been, we've been short staff for a while. I mean, I have to tell you, we've been running around a lot lately, chasing after people cutting trees and, you know, and it's not like, you know, the day starts, you think you're doing one thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody calls so-and-so's cutting a tree over here, and you, you, you can't, you know, it's just the, what you thought you were going to accomplish in that particular day doesn't, doesn't happen. And the, these things just have to be done. I know that feeling. Time. That's, why, that's why I write everything I have to do down, mm -hmm. and then I just move it to the next day. The next day. That's yeah, I, I know the feeling, Dan. All right, so, we, uh, we, so uh, could we do it for a resolution for the following? Well, that would be the fifth then, right? right. That would be the... Yeah, the, would that the work really session? Well, no, the, you can, got an, we've got one more meeting on the 28th. You could do one on the 20th. You can do it on the 28th. All right. The 28th work? That's two weeks? If, if we'll, we'll do our best to have it ready for All the 28th. Right. Otherwise, okay. otherwise, the fallback would be the 4th. But I think we, we sh provided something else doesn't come up that I'm not aware of, we will, we will have it ready for that meeting to advertise. Okay. And where, any movement on the, on the police uh, and, and courthouse? That, that, as soon as we get this one out, We'll be ready to go with that one. And like I say, we're retooling, so a lot of the effort that's going into this one is just going to roll into that one. But so, have we, have we like made any, any uh, advancements on the design, any advancements on the, on the I mean, site? To be honest with you, I just want to get this one done, <laughs> you know, and then we'll focus, you know, focus on that one and get that one done because there's no point in jumping around. It's just get this one done, and then we'll advance to the next one. What, what kind of a timeline do you think we could have question. on that, Dan? <laughs> well, that should go a little. That should go faster now because, like I say, we're retooling. We're trying. Dan, I don't think it could go any longer, so <laughs> or any slower. How how, how how long? No, but about. What are you thinking? Uh, it should should be by the end of July. I think. We'll end have of July. Yeah, because yeah, we're we're running out of summer here. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick. That's my that's my fear, and and guys that are out there working now are out there working. They got their summers. Planned, and I just hope we can get this stuff done before. I mean, we got boilers going in, we got tanks going in, we got YCC getting this, we got this, that, and the other thing. I really want to get these this stuff these moving. Two, these two projects. These two projects. Yeah. Now, on on the on the system side, I know that you've been working with Phil directly on that. I know that we're looking at heat pumps. I know that we're uh, looking at a couple other modifications mm -hmm. so we can finally get us off this steam system from. When? It, it, well, it's been here forever. <laughs> From day Since one. Tommy I mean, that would have been a tea kettle. Yeah. We started with you're steam. sitting here typing things. You started with steam in the sizzling. building in 19, <laughs> in 19, whatever it was, 32. The technology has evolved since then. From, since, you don't say. Since 1932, <laughs> you think the technology's gotten better? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit more efficient? Yeah. So We will be getting rid of that big white submarine out there. Yep. We'll be getting rid of that tank. Yep. That'd be um, nice. Yeah, sooner than later. You know, well, I mean, I guess we could really get rid of that right now if we transfer the oil in. We don't really need oil right now. Yeah, we just got to wait to get the other tank in. That's all. Right, but I'm saying you don't need oil right now. No, we, we got to have a place to put it. Right, but he's saying you don't need oil because you're not you're not heating the building. Right, right, right. But what, yeah, but where, are gonna, where are we going to yeah, put it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't use it for hot water. Oh. Is there any oil in there? Yes, yes. half a tank, five hundred gallons. Uh, I'll help you move it. We can lift it together, right? Oh, yeah. It's only 500 gallons. That's it. We got it. All right, Dan. All right. Appreciate it. That's a story. All right, Dan. Any Thanks, other questions Dan. from the board? You guys good? Good. So we hope right. that he's back in two weeks with the, with the resolution to go out to bid. Like want to get this uh, move forward. Says, take your time and hurry up. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> That's what my brother always says. Some things are out of our control. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you. All right, Mr. Rena. Here we go. Computer. If you think about it, actually, Joe, we're right on time. It's eight thirty-six. So okay, there you go. Um, it's You're not used to something that, new I for know. me. I know, I know, I know. Joe, where have you been? I want to go wherever he's been. Look at him. He he looks so dead. sunshine state. I'm telling you, he looks uh, like a movie star a little bit. Thank yeah. you. 
Uh, I don't feel like one, but thank you. <laughs> you, uh, do you. Are you going to put it up or am I? Uh, I am. All right, I'm getting out. Perfect. I'm ready to go. Looks All relaxed. yours. Hop right in there. He looks relaxed. He looks like he should have a pina colada or something in his hand at this point. Right? <laughs> Two days ago, I was. Uh, <laughs> I think we should all have pina colada. Never mind. Okay. Um, all right. So we're uh, we're working on a, a five lot subdivision for uh, John and Elaine Kinkart. Yep. Um, you exited, they live you at the they live at the end of Maxwell Drive. This is Maxwell Drive here. No, you lost it. You, you exited out of it instead of minimized it. You have to sign back in. Oh, jeez. It's all right. Take your time. You can tell us more about Florida. Yeah, that margarita threw him off. I know. <laughs> or pina colada, pina rather. Colada. The ocean was beautiful. You ever have a Miami Vice? It's half. It's I know. He should not colada. say it out loud. He does. And a, and a half strawberry daiquiri. <laughs> Ooh. It's so good. Why is that a bad thing? What is it? What is it? What? It's a Miami Vice. What is that? Half pina like colada, half strawberry daiquiri. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Let's go have some Miami Vice. <laughs> it's good. We used to, when I was a bartender, I don't want to know. A half, to, half pina colada, half strawberry daiquiri. Oh, yeah. they? No. They've now named it, Ed. A that was a long time ago. It's like my favorite All thing. Right. That was before TV. Oh, All that's right. How you know on <laughs> that's how you know on vacation. It's frozen. All right, Joe. All right. Now so that I'm thirsty, go. please so this tell is us. A, this is Maxwell Drive here. This is the King Cards home mm -hmm. right here. Um, there's also, when the Dorchester Heights subdivision was created, there's also a right-of-way extended, which uh, touches their property here. It's 24 and a half acres, and this is the, uh, the boundary of the property here. So um, what the King Carts uh, would like to do is subdivide their property into five lots, one of which will contain the existing residence. And let me just take it in a little tighter here. Um, so this layout that we're showing you here is a conventional layout. So it meets, this is half acre zone. Uh, so it meets all the standards of half, half, acre, half acre zone. Um, the smaller of the lots, which is this one here, is, is about uh, three quarters of an acre. And the, the remaining lots are all at least an acre in size. Uh, <coughs> um, so the, the plan is to access off this extended right of way mm -hmm. from Dorchester Drive into, uh, and, and this plan shows a, a cul-de-sac here, which again meets town standards. And it's providing f legal frontage for the four lots in the back and the legal frontage for the existing houses on Maxwell Drive. Um, what, we're, what we're asking the town board to do is to authorize the planning board to use a, a, a section 300-22 of the uh, town code, which is the flexibility standard. And what that will allow us to do is uh, change uh, allow us flexibility in the layout of the lots. Um, the King Carts would prefer that the roadway be a private roadway, so the town would not have to own and maintain it. The property owners would. Um, we're providing a right-of-way, so is, if, in fact, someday in the future, property owners get together and they want to make it a town road, um, the, the, the land is in place. Uh, the road will be uh, uh, 16 foot wide instead of 24 foot wide road which is a, the town standard so so essentially it's a private road uh, similar to what we did for the feather bed subdivision up off of uh, Jacob um, so what this does is allows a little more um, uh, again using the term flexibility a little more flexibility in the placement of the homes and the shapes of the lots um, we still has a as you, you still have as you can see oversized lots it just allows us to you to work uh, with the contours more it it's less disturbance going this way less impact on the property uh, <coughs> and it provides a much nicer project in addition to that uh, the the main house could if in this on this plan could in fact also have uh, frontage uh, or access off the cul-de-sac if they so so desired to change the the orientation of the house so um, we've done this before, and I honestly don't remember the process, but we did this for um, the Featherbed subdivision, and we did it for uh, Fieldstone Manor, the Katucci project. And 
and, and the town board in both those cases um, authorized the planning board to use the flexibility standard. So it's, a, it's just a planning tool. It gives the planning board a little, you know, a little more um, uh, to work with and it gives the, gives the applicant a little more to work with to come up with a nicer project. Mm -hmm. um, and John, we have the memo here from the planning board requesting the town board authorize it. So the planning board is in favor mm -hmm. of, yeah. of the tool yep. of implementation. That is part of the process planning board looks at this oh, and determines that so that's the <laughs> best course of action so they mm -hmm. sent it over as a request so they are in favor of it yes okay questions from the board yep. none no. so, sewer or septic for these uh it's sewer sewer no pump ups so all gravity yeah so what we're, what we're going to do is there's a a sewer manhole right at the right at the end of maxwell drive right at, right in front of the property mm-hmm uh, we're going to run a gravity line right up through here for, to service these three lots. And then uh, this lot here, will either we'll run a service line out to the manhole that's over here, or we'll run down. We've, we're leaving an easement in the event that they want to just run a service line around down that way. The only reason I'm asking, I remember we had, I think it was feather bed where we had the issue with the generators, if they were going to put right, one so generator in or five or four, whatever the ha right. number of houses going in right. there. That's because we were, we were putting in a low-pressure system on that this is all grab oh grab okay can you show the the image again though between the two i just can you go back to the with, without the flexibility so that's with and that's without okay okay yep okay all right so uh that's fine. yes so adam we'll have you draft a resolution it's a refer out in a public hearing. Refer out in Adam? Okay. Refer out in public hearing? John? Uh, I believe that in, you've been doing public hearings on them. Mm -hmm. I would check Featherbed and. Catucci? Yes, Catucci. Just to check, but I'm pretty sure you've been doing public hearings. Okay. I, I honestly don't remember. Yeah. No, I think we did actually. Yeah. Okay, so you want to refer, we'll refer out to the public hearing? Yeah. Maybe we throw it out, make sure we get all the information and everything together, and then it's on the council because I have a lot of stuff, but I just want to verify that first before we start a public hearing. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Do, do we have to come uh, come back before the board to set the public hearing, or will you? We set the public hearing uh, today? Well, we, we have to refer it out, and that's probably about a month to hear back from all the boards. And you should really address any comments that might come up. So I think we should definitely refer it out tonight. But I don't want to set a public hearing until we're a little bit closer to knowing exactly what. And we're what were you? What, how does that work for you guys? Well, I mean, timing is everything. The sooner the better, of course. But um, you know, like I said, if we have to do a public hearing, then that changes the, the ball game for us, I guess. But um, is it pushes you a week or two, or no? You're looking at month? a month or two, right? Yeah. Right, Almost because if you if weeks. you have to refer it out, yeah, you, you need to leave. Right, you're looking at a month or two. We can we can do a pretty quick referral, so I think we can work that out with you. Okay. Okay. All right. All right so we have a a motion to refer out and and so public moved. hearing. Diana. Um, refer out. You just want to, motion to refer out. So Second. moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. We're out. Thank you got you. it. Okay. Another one of those uh, take your time, hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> we have another one. Excuse me, the name of the game. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Serena, enjoy. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Please give the King Carts their best. Okay. We've got resolutions. We're going to authorize the supervisor to enter into a memorandum of agreement with the Civil Service Employees Association. Uh, we're going to authorize the comptroller to process a budget transfer of 175.5. This also goes to the HVAC upgrades at the Capolini Center. Mm -hmm. Authorize a budget transfer from the comptroller, $11,000 for the payment to Eastern Oil Company for the oil tank replacement and Putnam Mobile Mix for concrete. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Good night. Joe. Night, we'll authorize the comptroller to process another budget transfer from the highway department. This is 86000 
uh, for three Ford Super Duty F550s. I said it right that time. You did 555550s. Five, 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 yeah. uh, we also are requesting, we're, this, is, this is supposed to be a resolution, we're requesting the New York State Department of Transportation to address deteriorating road conditions along Route 132. We've received several complaints from residents about its current condition, and we spoke with the highway superintendent about it, and he concurred. Uh, we are going to award a bid for the John Deere Construction Equipment uh, OEM parts, and it's awarded to Jesco Inc. And we're going to award a bid for streetlight maintenance repair services. And that goes to Hanover Electric. We're going to award a bid for traffic light repair and maintenance. That's awarded to New York Con Corporation. We're going to award bid for asphalt laid in place. And that's going to Kecht Construction. Uh, we'll stop there. Take a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Councilman Diana, you have a resolution recognizing Flag Day. Thank you, Supervisor. Flag Day. Whereas the American flag represents our nation and values of freedom, equi e equality, justice, and hope, and whereas the American Revolution began in 1775. The colonists did not fight under one unifying flag, but under their own flags. And whereas on June 14, 1777, the Second Continental Congress passed a resolution stating that the flag of the United States shall be 13 stripes, alternate red and white, and that the Union be 13 stars, white on a blue field representing a new constellation. And whereas President Woodrow Wilson marked the 100th anniversary, uh, anniversary of the resolution establishing, establishing the flag by declaring June 14th as Flag Day, and whereas the American flag has aspired Americans on the battlefield, I'm sorry, inspired Americans on the battlefield as has provided comfort during times of war and peace and has stood as a symbol of hope for Amer for millions of people who have come to America seeking better lives and now therefore be it resolved that the town of Yorktown recognizes June 14th 2022 as flag day and encourages its residents to proudly display its important symbol throughout the year in conclusion to that, I wish the U.S. Army happy birthday today, That's June fourteenth, right. seventeen seventy-five. That's right. Mm -hmm. yep. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I also want to thank uh, the Yorktown Elk Lodge. They hosted a, a great Flag Day ceremony. I know you were there. Flag Day ceremony uh, up at um, Seabury, uh, and they actually—I thought they did a great job displaying all the different flags, and it shows you the evolution of the flags. Uh, and also, uh, just a side story, but it was cool. Uh, Memorial Day weekend, I was up at uh, the Putnam County uh, Veterans Field where they were doing their flag retirement, and, and I told you this story before. And they pulled out this one flag, and it was so thin that you could see through it. And then, we, and then thankfully, someone said, well, let's count the stars. There were 36 stars in this flag. And if you do the history of that, that brings the flag back to the Civil War. That's amazing. Which is just incredible. So we were able to, like, keep and preserve this this historic flag i mean it was it was really cool to see so uh but again thank you to the else lodge for for doing a great job today it was a it was a great cer ceremony yep they, they always do they, they they're built on you know yeah. the foundation is the flag and and uh and the uh, patriotism yeah. so it's, it's a great organization and it is all right we got juneteenth resolution going over to councilwoman luciana howitt thank you whereas juneteenth is a re or is recognized as the old nationally celebrated commemoration of the end of slavery in the United States. And whereas President Abraham Lincoln first issued the Emancipation Proclamation effective January 1st, 1863, freeing the slaves in the South. However, Southern slave owners ignored that old order. On June 19th in 1865, Union soldiers arrived in Galveston, Texas, and enforced the president's order, freeing the slaves two and a half years after it was first decreed. This day has since come to be known 
as Juneteenth. And whereas Juneteenth has been also titled June June, Freedom Day, Emancipation Day, and Emancipation Celebration. And whereas Juneteenth celebrations have been held to honor African American freedom while encouraged while encouraging self-development, education, and respect for all cultures. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of Yorktown proclaims June 19th as Juneteenth Day in recognition of June 19th, 1865, the date on which Union soldiers ended slavery in Galveston, Texas. And further be it resolved that the, Yorktown, that the town of Yorktown reiterates its stance against all forms of oppression, racism, and bigotry, and further be resolved that the town of Yorktown supports the continued nationwide celebration of Juneteenth Day to provide an opportunity for the people of the United States to learn more about the past and to better understand the experiences that have shaped this nation. And further be resolved that the federal, state, and county governments, as well as local school districts, recognize Juneteenth as a holiday. And the town of Yorktown, pending by the CSEA, will similarly cl be closing town buildings in observance of Juneteenth Day on Monday, June 20th. And before we adjourn, I just want to wish my mom a happy birthday and a happy Father's Day to all the daddies out there. Have a great weekend. Uh, motion to uh, motion to accept. So moved. All, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, we do have three more. There, there is there is a, uh, a yeah, spelling. Oldest. It should yeah. be the oldest. Yeah, yeah nationally celebrated. Nope, that was actually. No, no, but I know. But do you correct the correction? I don't know. Not my correction. Okay. I'll correct it and resubmit it, it to. All right, we have three more uh, resolutions that came out of close on personnel. Be it resolved that Serafina Bravo of Yorktown Heights, New York, is hereby appointed temporary intermediate account clerk, job class code 0713-01, effective June 15th, 2022, to be paid from Yorktown CSCA salary schedule A1 group 6, SEP 5, which is $63,451 annually. Second, we have, be it resolved, that Thomas J. Pisano of Wapagers Falls, New York, is hereby appointed to the Civil Service Title Laborer, Job Class Code 0425-05, to be paid from Yorktown CSA Salary Schedule A, Group 5, Step 1, which is $46,389 annually, with benefits such as sick days, personal days, and floating holidays to follow the CSA agreement. Be it resolved, contingent upon successful completion of a drug test, be it resolved, that Thomas J. Pisano will report to work at the Refuse and Recycling Department on June 27, 2022, and this date will be used as the first date of appointment. Be it further resolved that this appointment is subject to a probationary period of not less than 12, nor more than 52 weeks, commencing on the first date of appointment on June 27, 2022. And lastly, be it resolved that Joseph F. Atardo Jr. of Shrub Oak, New York, is hereby appointed to the Civil Service title Senior Automotive Mechanic, Job Class Code 0484-02, to be paid from Yorktown CSEA Salary Schedule A, Group 13, Step 1, which is $67,435 annually, which benef with benefits such as sick, sick days, personal days, and floating holidays, to follow the CSEA agreement, be it resolved contingent upon successful completion of a drug test, be it resolved that Joseph Attardo Jr. Will, re will report to work at the Highway Department on July 5th, 2022, and this date will be used as the first date of appointment. And be it further resolved, this appointment is subject to a probationary period of not less than 12, nor more than 52 weeks, commencing on the first date of appointment on July 5th, 2022. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motions carry. And with that, we will make a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, Yorktown. Meetings adjourned. Thank you.